Hello, hello, Alchemists. How are you guys doing? It's another week, another episode. This is our Friday episode, and we're going to be continuing on our series. And this is all about how to actually deploy an app on GigaLixer. So if you remember last time, we went through and we logged into the CLI. Now we're going to actually deploy some code to uh, GigaLixer and see it running. Now, I went ahead and created a project. So this is uh, Phoenix, and we haven't talked about Phoenix yet, but we will in the future. But this is just going to be focusing on how to prepare our app to be used on GigaLixer. So the first thing is that we need to actually create an app on GigaLixer. Because I've already logged in uh, with the CLI to GigaLixer, all I need to do now is just create an app. So we do that with GigaLixer create. And we can name our app using the dash n flag. And I'm going to name mine Pangora test. Okay, that's already been taken from before. So let's go ahead and let's do Pangora GigaLixer test. There we go. Works just fine. As you can see, I've already created it before. Um, but this is a brand new one, Pangora GigaLixer test. Perfect. And it also created a Git remote for us. So if I type Git remote, there is our GigaLixer remote. So whenever we push to this repository, it's going to actually turn on the app for us. Um, we are not able to actually run our app yet. We have to still prepare it for GigaLixer. And there's a nice little guide on here. If you follow along over here, we can actually see how to do that. Um, it's not too bad. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually provision a database for ourselves. So we can copy this. And go to here. And this is just telling us that we should you know, upgrade, but we're just going to be playing along, so it should be fine. Awesome. So we have this already set up for us. Now the next thing we're going to do, not sure why this is, oh, here we go. Sorry, it's got a little bit lost. So this is what we need to do to actually prepare our app. Um, the one thing is that when you generate a Phoenix app, you're going to have this secret file that's going to be ignored. We actually don't even need that file because we can set everything with environment variables. So as you can see, it's grayed out over here. That means we're actually ignoring it. And we don't have too much stuff. Um, so we do need to grab this and move this part over to our production. We could just paste that at the end. And we don't need all of this, so we can just remove all of this. So this is going to be all comments, which we don't need. And finally, it's going to be our importing of that super file, which we're not going to need. So now I just need to paste this in. And this is also going to change. So this is our database connection. And they already provide something for us. And all we need to do is we need to set this pool connection down to two because the free connection is actually only four connections. And what happens is that every time you do a deploy, you're going to turn on the new app and then turn off the old app. And that's why we can only do a maximum of two because then the old app is going to have two and the new app is going to have two. And we're not going to need these, but we are going to have to replace this with URL system dot database URL This is because our database URL is actually in the environment. And we need to remember to turn on SSL connection because it's going to be a secured connection when using Gig Elixir. And that should be enough for now. Uh, we do also need to turn on a couple more things. So we're going to let 
the uh, server deploy our assets for us. So we need to turn this part on. And we're going to actually need to set the URL. So the host name uh, is going to be Elixir.com. Elixirapp.com, sorry. And we can get our name of our app from the environment. This is how we can catch strings. That's the beginning. And this one, our port is going to be set from the environment also. It's going to be 8080, I believe. Or 4000, so that's fine. And the last thing that we need, also comes from here, is the secret key base. So we'll copy that. Go to here. And we can just add this here. Paste that in. And this one comes from here. Gigalixer is actually going to create this for us, so we don't need to worry too much about this. Secret e base. And then a comma to the end. Let me just double check everything. Yep. So now we don't need this file anymore. This is useless. Move that to the trash. And now we need to do a couple more things. The first thing is that we need to actually add something, which is we need to actually add distillery to our project. That's version 2.0. Next steps. Good. This still really helps us to package up our app and run it as a uh, Erlang or as an Erlang package. With that, we're going to get more abilities such as uh, clustering of the of the nodes, which I'm going to show you how to do later on. So first thing is we're going to actually need to generate. Uh, a release, and so to do that, we need to run this task in order to generate the files for that release. And it just goes ahead and creates this rel directory, and here is going to be the some configurations. But we don't need to change anything in here so far. We just need to have these files. Um, so this is ready, and now because we're running a Phoenix app we do need to set some build packs. So build packs are actually going to um, do some, how would you say that? It's going to set up, it's going to set, uh, compile our assets for us, create the Erlang distribution, and a couple other things. So we need to create a file called .buildpacks. And the build packs that we need, I'm going to pull them from from the docs. They are listed on the docs. It's here. This is for the assets, like the JavaScript, etc. This is for running distillery, so we're going to release for us. This is to clean up any old stuff. And this is for getting all the Elixir uh, Erlang stuff set up for us. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually tell it what version of Elixir and Erlang to use. That's pretty simple. And we just need to create another file called Elixir build pack dot config. And I'm going to borrow this, grab this from another file. So we're going to use the latest version of 1.8.1. Um, so this is not the latest version of Erlang, but I'm going to use this one because this is the latest 
version of Erlang that is actually supported. And I'll show you that if you go to this project, you'll see 21.2.5 is the latest one that this build pack supports. Uh, but the latest one at this time I think is 21.2.7 or 21.2.6. So just know that this is not the latest one. So we set our version of Elixir, we set our version of Erlang. And that should be enough for us to go ahead and give this a try. Uh, another thing to know is that this is actually running order. So first it's going to try to clean any cache that's there, set up Elixir Erlang, um, set up the assets and finally deploy it on our app for us. So now we just add these to our project. And first initial big elixir deploy. And let's push to big elixir. Cool. So we can check our deployment status using the Elixir PS. And it looks like it's unhealthy. Still trying to probably deploy. It takes a little bit of time. How about now? Okay, healthy. So it looks like it should be running. So now if we Grab this and we go to the Elixir test .com. and There's our Gigalixir demo and it's running perfectly. Awesome. So that's it for now. Um, next week I'm going to have a new video on Gigalixir, some more advanced settings. So I will catch you then. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.